Have you ever wondered if your cell phone can help your marriage or hurt your marriage? We got a request asking us to talk about cell phones and marriage on our podcast. So today we're going to tackle that. Stay tuned. Hello, folks. <laughs> I just wanted them to think maybe you weren't here. <laughs> Well, there's going to be some people that might be really sad that they didn't hear me. Fine. Hello, folks. There we go. Um, that was kind of funny, though. Uh, you, y'all should see us because probably the most difficult part of the entire podcast for us is trying to come up with the little short intro right at the beginning yes. that just sort of introduces the podcast. And uh, we sort of fight over who's going to have to do that. Do you think And it's the that... only thing that we ever have to, like, I know. Oh, start, do that again, uh, do that but again. But do you think that people, do you think anybody's ever heard the intro and been like, yeah, I'm not listening to that? Um, I... They may have just. <laughs> They're like, oh, Heather did the intro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that has anything to do with it. Oh, goodness. Okay. But it is going to be a super interesting topic today. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, we had somebody, yeah, like you mentioned in the in the beautifully done <laughs> thank intro. You, thank you. I mean, just <laughs> crushed at, it. Crushed it. <laughs> um, but somebody uh, on the survey that we did, which we got so many responses. Yeah. That was just really, really good for us. Um, but we've been compiling all that data. And so we were looking through some of the topics that were requested and this one just caught our attention. We thought it was very interesting. Yeah. Because it wasn't, you know, a lot of them are, are, are similar and they're they're really obvious things. But somebody mm-hmm. said, um, maybe talk about cell phone usage. Mm-hmm. You know what else is interesting? You just said data. Mm-hmm. And I don't say data. You say data? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder, do you always say data? Like the program Bacon wants to get into. Sports management. Data and analytics, right? Not data. I think I say data. Do you? Wow. I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't really okay. know. I just, I. Tomato, just tomato. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do a, ooh, that'll be fun. Let's do a survey this week on Instagram. Not a survey, but a poll. Yeah, and, and is that ask, poll going to say, do you say data d- or oh. data? <laughs> D-A-T-A or D-A-T-A? <laughs> <laughs> Check one. <laughs> <laughs> Could you put the long, the you know, long. hash hash mark? Well, you could over, do it as a video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, people would, then people would have to listen to it. Yeah. We're getting true. really okay, sorry. deep into some weeds here that we should not <laughs> even be All that done on a cell phone. Mm. Okay, cell Speaking phone of cell phones, usage. I mean, if we were going to do a if we're, cell phone, is it a cell phone data plan or <laughs> data plan? <laughs> Ooh, I say data Ooh. plan. Huh? I say data plan. I know. That's what wow. you just said. Hey, that is not what we're talking <laughs> about today. We are talking about cell phones and how cell phones can affect your marriage. So, yes, and they can. They can definitely affect your marriage in lots of ways. Yeah. Um. Hey, well, while we're getting started with this, why don't we throw... I say, because everybody that's listening to this, they're like, all right, here we go. They're going to tell us all the things that are negative about Mm -hmm. our cell phones. Mm So why don't we start off and tell a few positives? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) You weren't expecting it either. You were like, okay. Oh. No, I have one right away. You use a cell phone in an incredible way to encourage me throughout the day. Um, it lets me, by sending me text, you let me know you're thinking about me and you let me know that you're praying for me. You ask me how you can help me. Like, Hey, I'm going home for lunch. Would it help you if I ran by the grocery? There's lots of things that you send me throughout the day that are encouraging. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Look thanks. at that right off the bat. Well, I mean, that is, I think that, um, you know, one of the things that people kept telling us that they wanted us to talk about was communication Mm -hmm. or lack of communication. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of hard to believe that marriages have communication problems when we have a communication Mm -hmm. device that never 
leaves us, Mm -hmm. stays in our hand all Mm -hmm. the time or in our pocket, Mm -hmm. but we can't communicate with each other. And I think, um, so when I think about, and I know our topic's not necessarily communication, it's specifically about cell phone, but when I think about communication and the problems that we have as, as married couples, one is just that we just don't talk like we like just in the day to day things we don't communicate very well, and I'm just saying in general we 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 do a good job of it. But I'm thinking, why? Like <laughs> we literally have a device. We're talking about a cell phone, so th- the communication should be so much easier and enhanced. Now then you've got the whole well you know our communication maybe it's not so bad that i mean we know how to get from point a to point b and we know about picking up the kids or picking up groceries or whatever we just don't talk and we don't share and we don't communicate Mm -hmm. well just like what you said though and it doesn't need to be that the cell phone is the only method of that communication but it can jump start a lot of stuff i think I mean, I think, to to be honest, I think it's a great tool for flirting. Mm-hmm. And, because, and, and part of that, too, is, I mean, I know that a lot of couples, they kind of fall out. I mean, after the honeymoon phase, they sort of fall out of the habit of, of flirting and sometimes even forget how to do it. And, and it's a little uncomfortable. It's like, we're married. Why do we do this? And that's a really um, easy way to do it in a in a in a in a way. Not that I'm saying to hide behind your cell phone. It's just it just makes life fun, you know. So if you use your cell phone for positive things like encouraging encouraging each other throughout the day, flirting with each other throughout the day, communicating so that there's not the big mistakes and the blow-ups when you, oh, you didn't tell me this or we didn't communicate. I mean, like, I'm even thinking of the the positive part of a calendar and being able to, like, just always know what's coming up so that there's no surprises. I mean, we use our calendar Mm -hmm. religiously. And so I just think it's, I think there's so many positive things. Yeah. I agree with that. Okay. You were making yourself some notes. Yeah, I was. Okay. None of them. Well, one of them, a negative spurred from what you were talking about with the constant communication, being able to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that there's a, a little bit of danger in that because when you get home, it's like, oh, we've talked about everything. (laughs) Like I can remember when you would go on trips when we were dating or young married, when cell phones weren't as big of a deal and you would come back from your trip and we would spend hours like, Oh my gosh, this happened. And you'll never believe how this happened. And, and while you were gone, you know, this happened at work or, you know, all of that good communication back and forth, just telling each other about our lives over the week where now when you go on trips, we're able to communicate during the day, like Logan did this, guess what, this happened. And so when you get home, there's not that massive, you know, shared communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know what we, what you could do instead, you get home and you're like, well, we've already talked about everything. Well, we should just kiss. (laughs) Let's just make out. Just... (laughs) <laughs> I mean, what else is there to do? That's There's right. nothing to talk about. That's Let's right. just make that's out. That's right. Because mm-hmm. I missed you. <laughs> You're so weird. But yeah, I think that that could be, you know, part of it. You know, they say women have a certain amount of words and men have a certain amount of words. Mm-hmm. And if you're all talked out by the time you get home, it's like, yeah, now I don't have anything else left to share with yeah. you. You know? Well, I think, though, you remember when, I mean, we come from a we come from a different era because we know that there's people that are younger that listen to us. We also know there's people older than us that listen Mm -hmm. to us and people our age. But when we were growing up dating, we didn't have cell phones. Mm -hmm. And so we weren't constantly talking, but we would get on the phone and just talk forever. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so, I I mean, I'm sure at some point 
we sort of even thought, gosh, I wish we could just kind of communicate all the time. Mm-hmm. And yeah. now we can. Yeah. Like, okay, do you remember we had walkie-talkies? Yeah. Because, you know, we grew up down the street from each oh, other. I know we had walkie-talkies. And we had walkie-talkies. Like, we could communicate with each other when we mm-hmm. wanted to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember us going on, I remember going on church trips and, like, the two vans mm-hmm. having walkie-talkies yeah. between the two vans, right. you know. In case somebody got, you know, yeah. lost. Lost or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I, I think that cell phones take, uh, take a bad rap, which mm-hmm. they should in some ways. And we're going to mm-hmm. talk about that. We're going to talk about some of the dangers, which most of you know, some of the dangers, but we just want to point out some things. But what I want us to say, we started off with the positive because I think it's important for people to go, why are we not using it for, That's for right. more of a positive thing to grow our marriage? Mm-hmm. And like, mm-hmm. when you just think about there's no excuse to not over communicate. There's mm-hmm. no excuse to not send the encouraging text, to send the flirting text, to just be have fun. I mean, like if you look back through your text, and I would encourage you. This is here's a, here's a great little um, exercise to do. Look back through your text with your spouse over the last week, and if it's all business, mm-hmm. change something this week, mm-hmm. like. It, you need to have fun, yeah. like have fun with your spouse. Mm-hmm. And if it's sending, you know, funny memes or whatever, just little funny things that you've seen or funny pictures or, you know, the flirting, the just very encouraging, I love you, all of that. If you're not sending that, you're missing a huge mm-hmm. opportunity to make something that I believe that God can use it for something really powerful in your marriage. But instead, we just, I mean, when you talk, when you think about cell phones and how it affects marriages, it automatically goes to negative mm-hmm. and what Satan is doing to marriages through them. Through yeah. them. yeah. So, And, you know, we, we have a group chat among our family, too, that you and I are both in and our kids. And, and we make each other like you make me laugh so hard in that group chat Mm -hmm. that about and it doesn't even have anything to do with us Mm -hmm. necessarily. But I laugh with you and think, oh, my God, she's such a good dad. And, you know, I have Mm -hmm. all of those emotions and that's not even text between just me and you. Yeah, it's just an encouragement with our four family and, and, and that, and those things, those gifs or gifts or whatever that you send. And I mean, they make me they laugh out gifts. laugh. Okay. We're they're not going to do the data to data thing again. <laughs> no, they're um, just gifts. Oh, are to they? You. Okay. <laughs> but they, but it makes me smile and, and it makes me fall in love with you more just because how, how you interact even among our family. So it's not just, me and you. And and I have another I have another one. I mean, I have a suggestion. Like I think that part of this is the more that I'm talking about it, I'm like, we've got to figure out ways as married couples to steal this back from Satan. Mm-hmm. Like steal this back. Because there's some of you that are thinking, Oh, well, we've got to talk about the elephant in the room that we're on our cell phones too much. Mm-hmm. We're playing games. We're looking mm-hmm. at videos, whatever it is. But chances are when that's happening, you're sitting in the same room with your spouse and you're both doing it. Mm-hmm. There's even a way to steal it back then. Like commun- like you- if you're looking over there at them and you're like, they're just looking at their phone. Well, send them a text. Send them a text. <laughs> I mean, say, you and know. And don't be a smart aleck. You no. go, I have to send you a text to get your attention. No, no. It's just but, mm-hmm. in, have fun with like, ju- it's a, it can be a very positive thing. All right, let's flip it. Let's flip it real quick. And let's just talk through some of the some of the really obvious and negative things that can happen. And we'll, blah, 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 go back. Let's go back because there's also this very positive thing that, um, in case y'all don't realize, our ministry is, is very very active on social media. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for our phones and being able to do that then we wouldn't have this incredibly massive reach that we have. Mm-hmm. Like, like God is in that. Absolutely. And so um, so I don't want anybody to listen to this going, oh, they're attacking the cell phones. Mm-hmm. Because I, I would say that there's a whole lot more positive that can happen. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter 
of making sure that we don't get sucked into the negative stuff. Right. Well, the cell phone can be a tool and it's whose hand is it in? Yeah. Are you putting it in the hand of the enemy? Are you putting it in the hand of God and that letting it be used for his glory and his purposes mm. rather than the, the hand of the enemy? Yeah. I mean, I bet those I bet those 12 apostles thought they didn't think, but I bet I bet they're like <laughs> Man, what if we had cell phones back then instead of having to walk all those miles mm -hmm. to right. go share the gospel with mm -hmm. people? So, yes, there is some great positive things. All right. Now, let's go back. Let's talk about some negative stuff and how we can combat that in our marriage. First of all, um, can I just, I mean, I think this maybe goes without saying because people, we've said it a million times, but there's, there's no... Um, passwords on your phone that your that your spouse doesn't know about right um we understand look i mean it's so crazy sometimes when we post things and the response that mm -hmm. people give us you're sometimes you're kind of like hey maybe we should think before we open our mouths <laughs> a little bit but like you know when people or type yeah but but we do we get some responses sometimes that we're like mm, come on people y'all know what we meant but we both have uh, passcodes on our phone um, because you're a teacher and mm -hmm. somebody could come and pick up your phone at any time, a mm -hmm. kid. Mm -hmm. And I just have it because I never know where my phone's <laughs> going to be. I mean, what if it's laying around and somebody picks it up, you know, but we know our, we actually have the exact same passcode. Mm -hmm. So it is, I mean, if I want to pick, if I need to pick up your phone for any reason, mm -hmm. then I don't even have to ask you, what's your password? Well, and we have grown children. Like I know that you wouldn't want it on there if you have younger ch children for the, them to get on. But I mean, our grown children even know our passcodes. Oh, yeah. Because they're like, mom, <laughs> they let me borrow your phone real quick. <laughs> because, and I love that they know we don't have anything to hide from them either. No. Now, around Christmas time, every now and sure. then, I'll say, don't get in my Amazon account or whatever. But, but they it, have, I mean, they have just as much yeah. access to it. There's just freedom in that, yeah. you yeah. know? And there should be. There mm -hmm. should be, and that's the thing. There should be freedom. And that that obviously goes for not just your pass, your the passcode on your phone, but like anything that you're doing, social media, like your spouse just needs to be able to have complete control of that. Yeah. If they want to go in and look at any time, and it's not... It's not that you're, I mean, I know that there's people where there are trust issues because of things in the past, but there's also just this accountability. So mm -hmm. even if nothing has ever happened in the past, there's no reason to be, you know, suspicious or untrusting or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's just, hey, I'm an open book. Mm -hmm. Now, we have dealt with some couples before that were not willing to do that. Yeah. And we can honestly say those people are in trouble. Yeah. Well, and you know what's crazy to me is I actually heard somebody say in our counseling session one time that if there wasn't a passcode on it, that they probably would never want to pick it up. But mm. the fact that they had a passcode that they didn't know made them yeah, curious. That's it's right. the, it's like, why? It, yeah. Like, like why it's you... the, you know, don't touch the wet paint. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you saying don't do it makes you curious. So, oh, yeah. I want to touch the wet paint every time I see a right. sign like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like if you have a passcode on it, your spouse obviously is going to wonder why. Mm -hmm. Like, you're prote you're hiding something. Yeah. But if it's not that or you know the passcode then it's like well i mean he wouldn't let me yeah. he wouldn't let me have yeah. the passcode if he was hiding something mm -hmm. you know so i think it's just kind of a little bit it's just a respect thing yeah for sure and not only that but the communication that you have with people through your phone mm -hmm. that's a massive danger yeah and it is great for business and for quick communication mm -hmm. and things but if there are any signs that you are over communicating or too frequently communicating or even, you know, inappropriately communicating mm -hmm. with someone of the opposite sex, then that's not your spouse. Yeah. Then it has to stop. That is, I mean, I'm telling, we have seen, it is, it is the biggest red flag mm -hmm. for walking yourself down the road towards an affair. Yeah. Well, and if you listen back to our story, mm -hmm. it was the first thing, the mm -hmm. thing that I can go back to and pinpoint. Yeah. 
of what started it. Mm-hmm. Now, in the moment, I didn't know that that's what started it. But looking back, mm-hmm. I can go back and pinpoint that was it. And, you know, I, that's one of the things that I, that I wanted to um, address is it's not, just, it's not just communication that can be um, danger as far as talking to somebody that you shouldn't be talking to, whether it be through messaging or, um, or game, you know, like the games they have talking through them or email or any of that. But also, if you're like working too much on your phone, you can set like when I taught when I was teaching in the classroom, I could set it that when I left at four o'clock or whatever, I could turn off email notifications coming to my phone because it keeps you from getting work emails when you're at home and Mm -hmm. being present, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. at home. So that was just another thing that I thought about. So going back real quick to just games and stuff like that, like I, you, you love playing games Mm -hmm. on your phone. Mm -hmm. I, I don't play games on my phone. Um, and, and I don't want anybody to think that, Oh, he's so good. No, I just waste my time mm-hmm. doing other things, looking at <laughs> looking at sports things. Uh-huh. But I I don't play a lot of games. But there is a massive danger, and you mentioned that mm-hmm. that there is communication with people that you play games against. Mm-hmm. Not you. I'm yeah, saying yeah. in general. Yeah. And I'm just I'm just telling people that are listening if you're playing games, even if you think that it's innocent. Mm-hmm. And you're playing games where it is connecting you with somebody of the opposite sex, and there's any sort of communication there, it's a slippery slope right. that you are That's heading right. heading down. And there's plenty of games out there where you don't communicate with people. Mm-hmm. You know, like all the games that I play, like Wordle and the little mini thing and the little, you know, none of them, you don't talk to people. It's mm-hmm. just... You're doing that game, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's safer. But I, I just think that I think that that's one of those ways that Satan just tries to convince us that it's not that it's not, not a, big that big of a deal. You're just that's playing right. a game. Mm-hmm. But I know, and that, you're just saying good job, or you want to play again. Yeah, when mm-hmm. you're playing a game and you're waiting on the other mm-hmm. person, there's just this level of anticipation Mm -hmm. and waiting and Mm -hmm. oh that person paid enough attention to know it was their turn to play me Mm -hmm. you know and even if you're you don't think that's really going through Mm -hmm. your mind it is yep it -hmm. is and it Mm -hmm. is a oh i must be important to them because they played me right yes uh, Mm -hmm. absolutely and so uh, you know i don't i don't know how else to tell people that are listening to this other than just stop like it you're you're married Ruining your life is not worth it, mm-hmm. and ruining your marriage and your kids. So it's just a they, man. I, look, and I know we should write a book, but we could write a book about just this and the dangers and the boundaries that have to be in place. And so, yep. so I'm just saying those are massive red flags mm-hmm. that if it's going on on your device, mm-hmm. then remove it. Yeah. Go. Okay, I was just going to say that a lot of um, times when we talk to people, they um, want want to know the difference between emotional an emotional affair affair, affair. <laughs> words are hard yeah. and physical affair. And you know, we obviously could do a whole another podcast on that. But I think that part of those emotional affairs happen when it's communication through devices like mm-hmm. that cuz it's easier mm-hmm. to have that com- you know conversation behind a screen um where you aren't don't feel as bad about it mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can get away with saying things you wouldn't necessarily say and you know when you're communicating with somebody through email or through messenger or whatever you just have to make sure that you're doing it Mm business-like. And if it goes into anything that's personal, as in how was your weekend Mm -hmm. or, you know, you just have like, just keep it business when Mm -hmm. you're talking with somebody of the opposite sex. And I think that that is one way that emotional affairs happen. Um, Even if it's super, super innocent, um, you know, you email a colleague about something and then they text back or email back in there, you know, how, how, how was your weekend? I saw you went to the whatever game, like Mm -hmm. on, on social media. I didn't know you were a football fan. I look, I mean, it starts this connection of back and forth that 
there's no reason mm-hmm. for. There's no, you know, I mean, you don't want to be rude to people because you work with them, but you also can shut that down really quickly by answering, you know, really short and mm-hmm. to the point and not getting into a back and forth mm. um, emotional communication with them. Well, I think that an emotional connection can happen even without the other person mm-hmm. reciprocating it. Yeah. And so much of that, I think, happens through social media mm-hmm. because you can you can gain an attachment to somebody by following their life sure. and their story, all, a little bit stalking almost, yeah. but, but really just, you know, you click on these pictures and you're scrolling through and then it becomes, ooh, you know, I mean, whether you like how they look mm-hmm. or you just like their life or their story mm-hmm. or you feel sorry for them because something's mm-hmm. happened, but there becomes this emotional attachment that, they may not even know is going right. on, but then again, it's just that one step away mm-hmm. from something, you know, taking yeah. root. That's and right. Then it's then it can become extremely dangerous. Yeah, I think the um, really dangerous part of what you're talking about is you start to compare. Mm. Like you, you're following along with somebody's story, or your, you know. <laughs> Maybe their kid's doing something that you wish your kid was able to do, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you're all of a sudden comparing your life to their life or your spouse Mm -hmm. to that man that you're following along with. Or you're following some lady's journey and you're like, oh, I wish my wife would do that. And, you know. We couldn't do this episode without saying, you know, social media is everybody's highlight reel, Mm -hmm. but that's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what you're seeing in that man or in that woman or whatever in that person's marriage, Mm -hmm. what you're seeing, that's not 100% true. Mm -hmm. And it's not the only thing that's going on in their marriage. And I just, I think that comparison, um, with social media is probably one of the biggest dangers Mm. to a marriage um, because you're comparing your spouse to other Mm -hmm. men or Mm -hmm. or women and you're comparing your marriage to other people. And I mean, it can be, oh, they got to go on this trip Mm -hmm. or they can afford to dress like that and go to big events or that, I mean, you know, or he, look, he loves her enough mm-hmm. to do a picnic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be money related. Right. Just, right. you know, you can see something, oh, my husband did this for me. And you're like, my husband never does that for me, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think the comparison game is probably, you know, we hear all about it with um, teenagers and young adults when they're comparing um, themselves to other people and they start getting depressed because they're comparing their self to other mm-hmm. people. Same thing with marriages. Yeah. You can convince yourself that you don't have a great marriage. Um, and then that gets worse and worse and worse. The more you compare it to people that you think have the perfect marriage. Last thing, let's talk for just a minute or two about just the amount of time mm-hmm. that is spent on the phone and mm-hmm. how how much of a distraction that it can be, especially if you're at home and you're using that as your means of escape mm-hmm. and not engaging with your mm-hmm. spouse. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think that that's a significant danger. And actually, this is not an area that I'm good at. Um, I do, like you said, I do love to play games on my phone and and I'll catch myself, even if something's on TV, like watching a football game or something, I'll still play a game while the football game's on. And I kind of say, oh, but I'm in the room with them. But it's not really being engaging mm-hmm. um, and not really being alongside. Like yesterday, um, we unexpectedly had a day at home and we could have spent most of the day on our phone, but we were like, Hey, let's do something Mm -hmm. together. And even though we watched an entire Netflix semi, semi series, mini series, mini series series together, we were doing it together Mm -hmm. and, and we needed some time just to do that. And so it's not that you have, Oh, we should put those phones down and go do something purposeful. You can still do Mm -hmm. things that aren't intentional, but you can be intentional together. Well, I think the difference in that is because you may say, well, what's the difference in 
going to a movie together mm-hmm. or sitting at home and watching TV or a mm-hmm. movie as opposed to just sitting there and both of you on your phones. But there is there is a level of disrespect and m- even some mistrust. And, you know, there's just this, what are you looking at? Mm-hmm. And I mean, and I think that just comes in general. I'm not mm-hmm. saying between us. I'm just saying in general, there's just this... And almost uh, like society even says, why are you on your phone so much? Yeah. And you just kind of think that and feel that when you're together. And so, you know, yesterday, like you said, we watched several hours of a show and it was fun. Like Mm -hmm. we were just relaxing, but there was never this, you're not even paying attention to the show Mm -hmm. or you're not paying attention to me. I mean, you know, we even were laughing because it was cold and I was trying to make your feet cold and stuff, you know. And so there was that, that just, there's a difference in, in really being engaged and your phone just puts you, puts, it puts us in another world that we don't need to be in all the time. Absolutely. For sure. And you know, um, I was thinking about even last night in this, like you have to hear me. I'm not saying this was a negative, but, but it, I mean, it affected me. And, and you think about how this affected me and you wonder how often that happens with other people too. Like I walked out of the, I got, out of the shower, put on my PJs and came in. And normally you're reading and, and then I get in the bed and I'm reading. Well, you had on your headphones and you were watching a show and I didn't care that you were watching a show like that. You were trying to finish up something you had started, but I was like, why aren't you watching it on the TV in our room? Mm -hmm. And, and the reason why I asked that And you could have had all sorts of reasons and you could have even said, I didn't want to bother you because I knew you're reading, which is super sweet. But even if you're watching TV in our room and I'm reading, there's nothing between us. Like Mm -hmm. the headphones Mm -hmm. shut you out and put you in another world. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I was like, I'm just laying here reading next to him and he's in his own little world, which is so not that different Mm -hmm. (laughs) than you reading and me reading, but it's just the, it feels different. It feels different. Mm -hmm. It feels different. And I, you know, you think about, um, especially if your spouse is going to bed to read or just going to bed and you stay up and you're on your phone. Mm-hmm. It's like, go to the room and mm-hmm. go to bed at the yeah. same time your wife does, or at least be in the bed, mm-hmm. you know, just to be be together. Because then that's that whole level, like you mentioned a while ago, of just what are they doing on yeah. their phone? Like, why do they need to be in another room? Mm-hmm. It just raises, even if there's nothing that's right. to it. That's right. Even if there's nothing to it, it mm-hmm. just raises this little, huh, I feel like I'm not sure I trust oh, that yeah. or I'm not sure that I feel a oneness mm-hmm. with them. And then it can just lead your thoughts down a rabbit mm-hmm. hole where you can actually get angry at your spouse for no reason, really. Right. Um, but then if there is any sort of past hurt or mistrust, man, it just triggers, yep. you know, and it can trigger for no reason even Mm -hmm. but you know you just that one little thought of i wonder you know hey she may be playing a game but who's she playing the game with that's right you know and so we just i mean this is a great topic as something that i think every marriage struggles with we struggle with it but there's also some really 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 healthy things and so what we want to encourage you to do tonight don't get on your phone and play around. Get on your phone and flirt with your spouse Spouse, mm-hmm. if you have to. Actually, yep. don't even do that. Flirt with your spouse in person. <laughs> Put your phone away and just flirt with your spouse, period. All right. Hey, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. If you haven't signed up for our prayer challenge for mm-hmm. February, it's make sure up. you do that because it is coming up in just a few days, and we want to make sure that we're praying for your marriage during February. The RedeemedMarriage.com. Yep, RedeemedMarriage.com. There's a banner up top, and you can sign up there. All right, we'll see you guys next week.